This video relates to the 2023 higher level question B3, which is an axonometric projection question. Looking at the question, the image on the right shows an apple green outdoor dining pod. Figure B3 shows an incomplete diametric projection using the axonometric axis method of a similar dining pod. The elevation and plan are shown in their required positions. We are asked to do three things. The first thing A is draw the axonometric axis X, Y, and Z and the isosceles triangle ABC. Part B is to draw the elevation and plan orientated as shown, and part C is to complete the diametric projection of the pod. So looking at part A of this first, we're asked to draw the axonometric axis as shown, uh, and it's a diametric, so we're looking at 115 degrees, uh, measured from the vertical. So line up our zero here, 115, down along this way is the first one and 115 degrees going the other side also measured from the vertical the next thing piece of information that we're given here is that the distance from C to B is 130 so we will have 65 millimeters either side of this central piece here. So I can measure 65 this way and 65 this way. And I'm just going to project those vertically down to meet down here. This and this. So that will give us the line for C or CB. So I can draw in that line here for the line uh, BC, and I'll just label those as this is C and this is B here. Now I need to locate part uh, point A, which is going to be uh, at the top. And for that, I need to go take a line which is going to be perpendicular to my Z axis from either uh, from point B down here. So perpendicular here. Extend this up along this way. This gives me point A up here. So this green line here is perpendicular to this line along here. I can now join A back to C and complete the triangle and also complete part A of the question. For part B of the question, we're asked to draw the elevation and plan orientated as shown. So I'm going to start with the plan, putting that down here underneath. I'm going to project my points B and C down into that plan view. And somewhere down here then I'm just going to create a uh, line. So this line now is going to be parallel to the line BC here. I need to put in a semicircle. Uh, which will help me find my 90 degree angle. So just using the center point here, projecting this line down across to meet it, I can just draw in my semicircle here. Okay, and again, uh, create my 90 degree angle starting at this point up here. And same coming down this way. Next step I'm going to look at, I'm going to actually draw the elevation view next. And again, that's going to be done in much the same way. I'm going to project points A and C. Now this time, these are projected parallel to the x-axis, which is this one here. So these are projected up along this way. And again, creating a line out here that is parallel to this one here. I again need to draw a semicircle, um, so I'm going to extend this line out here, but this one is not in the middle, so my semicircle needs to be between the two. This is not in the middle, so I need to bisect this line first before I can do that. So bisect here, and 
and this here is the center that I'm looking for. Now taking this point, I'm going to draw my semicircle. Where the semicircle passes through this point that was projected out from the x-axis, that's going to be where I'm going to create my 90 degree angle from. So that's going to be here, and this one here as well. Next part, I'm going to start drawing the elevation view. Uh, we are told that the center is a specific height. It's 27 plus 16 up. So it's not up 50 from the bottom. So I'm just going to measure that up along here first. So I've got 27 here first, and then a further 16 on top of that. Again, going to take my lines parallel to this bottom line that I have. Here, so I need that line, and my center is going to be somewhere along this line. If you notice in the question, the cent the circle cuts through the bottom down here, so the center is not up 50, but it is going to be out 50 from this point. So we can measure in from here, 50 millimeters, and then draw our circle. So this is going to be a radius 50 circle. Line it up here checking that it's in the correct position, and now I can draw my full circle. So that gives me the circle up here. Now I'll just look at the internal part of this. I need to go up a further 16 here for a bit more of the detail. So again, line parallel to the bottom one. And I also need to find the eighth, the, what would be the top of it. So again, parallel to the side here, through the center, extend this up. This gives me that top point that I'm looking for. And it's the pink line in the question, which joins from here down to here. And again, from the top down to that point on the side. So from here down to here again. It's going to give me the table um, and seats and things in the middle of this. So to get the seats, it's from this point where that pink line intersects, that first 27 line. And down here at the bottom also. Uh, the table, I need a point, project this point up here. Same with this one. And that gives me the table. There's one final line which is this one running up here uh, which is kind of the top of the green outline in the 3D view. And then just a leg here also at the front which is just extending that line down. And that completes the elevation for us. For the plan, uh, you did need to draw this one first before you could draw the plan because there's some details down in plan that you can't get until you have the elevation drawn. So looking at this next bit down here, the distance that we're going to take is this one across, which is going to be 100. So this distance here, again using your sliding set squares the whole time for this, an adjustable set square, uh, the better. You can also use this is angle here is going to be at 45 degrees, so you can just use your set square, uh, your 45 degree set square for that if you wish. And the depth that we're coming out for this one is 78 millimeters. that's the outline now we need all the uh, lines that are going to be in the middle of this so you've got like the top of the table the seats and then you've also got these lines here as well I'm going to start with those ones we measure those from the elevation going to measure from the center here out to this point so that's this one I do need to locate that line here in the middle as well so that's going to be 50 so 
So I'm measuring from here out to the side. I can mark that here on either side. Here and here. Uh, I have the width of the table. So that's this distance. Measuring from the center out to the top of the table. I can put this mark here as well. And then I also have this distance down here at the bottom, which is the distance for the... Uh, so we've got this distance here, which I can mark down underneath on both sides. And this line will be a hidden detail line. So the outside ones are solid. We can see them. That's this point and this point here. Uh, the next one in is this point and this point here. So they're hidden detail there underneath the seat. We can't see them. And then finally, uh, two solid lines here, which is for the edge of the table and the edge of the seat also. And I'll just put the center line in here for good measure. And that completes part B of the question, which is to set up the elevation and plan. So for the final part of this question, we are uh, asked to complete the axonometric view in the center. I'm going to start with the curved section of this. Um, and there's a number of points that we already have found. So I've got this point here uh, to the edge, uh, this point, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine points. However, there is a large gap from here to here where we have no points, so we would need to find an additional point here. Make things a bit easier for yourself if you take this line point here, project that vertically up. It'll just be a bit easier when you're projecting your points from the plan up as well, as they're going to be in line with each other. So I'm just going to do that now next, and then I'll label my points. So this is projected up here, and this one here as well. So it gives me additional points up here, which is kind of 11 points in total, uh, if we're going to use all of them. So now we're going to be projecting points from the elevation view down into the plan. Uh, label your points to start out with, or index them. So one, two, three. We're going to have those points on the front and on the back. I'm going to label them in the plan as well. So starting here at the outside, this is 3. This is 4 and 2. This one here is 1. And it's also going to be that point up on top, which is 5. This line here is nothing. That would be according to this one here. This is 6 in the center. Again, the solid line here is nothing. This is 7 and 11. We have got 8 and 10, and then at the very outside we have 9. So take a point at a time. Um, don't overdo it. There's obviously some that you would be beneficial to take together, like 1 and 5. They would be helpful to take together, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, because they're on top of each other here down in plan. So firstly, going to project uh, point 1 down. We need to find them at the front and at the back. So this is at the back, out here will be the front somewhere. I'm going to project point 1 down here, and also point 5. And I'm going to project that from the plan view up also. And label them when you locate them. So this is one here. And this is 5 up here. And also 1 here at the back. And five here also. So picking another point, uh, I can project four and two down. I would not project any more points than that down in one go. It just becomes too messy. You lose which points you're projecting. Uh, so point four and two here. Label them. This is four and this is two down here. At the back, 
project them up as well. So point 0.4 here and point 0.2 down here. So we've now got 1, 2, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 4, and 5. I'm going to get point 0.3 in the middle. points as far as 1 to 5. I'm going to project point 6 next. So I'm doing front and back at the same time. You can do them separately. That's entirely up to you. So 7, 11, the remaining points are all projected up the same way. Um, just pick your points, project them, and move on. Now you need all these points at the back also just because some of them will be visible or they're going to be the kind of boundary between that kind of green section in the 3D graphic that's there. Um, so we do need to locate them correctly as well at the back. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Okay, so at the front now, I'm going to join up points 1 and 11. So that's a solid line across the front. And then I'm going to draw my curve that's going to pass through all of the other points around. So 1 up to 2. Up to 5, 6. Seven. The back I'm just going to go as far as 7 for the moment until I figure out what I can see and what I cannot see. So that's my curve here at the front. There is going to be more lines coming in along here. Uh, they will not be hidden detail. There's no hidden detail in this view, uh, in this type of drawing, so we're not going to put that into it. Uh, I'm going to draw in a dark line here joining the 2.7s that I have. That's that back edge, and I also have this front edge from 1 to 1 at the back here also. So that's kind of the outline of the, the dining pod. Uh, I'm going to start putting in some of the other lines that I have now next. So I've got the outline, The if we look at the question again briefly. Uh, it's the green um, section in the, the pictorial view. Uh, that piece there, we're going to put that into it next. So that's based on points 4 and 8 and 2, um, sorry, just 4 and 8. So I can put in a dark line here, joining the two 4s, so between 4 and 4 here, and between 8 and 8 here at the back. And I also need to join a line across here. So the top of this, as per the question, shows that it's kind of glass, or it's at least see-through. So we can see that line here at the back. 
if that's glass then I can also continue my line my curve down here down to at least eight for the moment and then we'll add a little bit more to that now in a moment next thing I'm going to look at is the um, the seat here at the front so the seat as we can see here joins from two across to ten so from two here across to ten that's going to be part of the seat it's also going to join back to one here somewhere so I'm going to find this point and this point down in the plan view or sorry in the, the axonometric view and project that down here also so that's going to intersect it here and same for this one that's also projected down you could join them up to the top as well and, and do that but this works just fine so point here and point here and again they join back to points 11 here on the side and one here on this side that's part of the seat. There is going to be the seat going back along this way. Um, so I've got this side here. On this side, I don't know how much of it's visible yet based on what where the table is. So I'm going to stick the table in next and then we'll see how many lines we can see coming back this way. So again, going to go with the outline of the table. I'm going to take this here at the front and here also. You can project the points down from the elevation view or just bring 3 and 9 across here and it will give you the same point. And this is this one here. So that's the front of the table. So the front of the table going to project that back now also up along here. Uh, we need to find where it hits the back, so I'm going to take this point and this point up as well. So I've got one and two. And again, where this line coming from the elevation view. So this one comes back as far as here. Again, that's the line that comes down from the, pl uh, from the plan. And same on this side also. So that's the table. What we're missing from the table is the front leg. It's not going the whole way back. It's just at the front, as we can see in the question. So that's just at point six here. So projecting, uh, just darkening in this bit of a line here. It does need to be darkened in. Now we can start to see the different parts of where that will be visible and will not be visible. So I've got all down along here that's going to be visible. So the bit at the ground that goes back as far as there. I also have uh, from point 10 here back as far as point 10 here at the back that all of that is going to be visible. So I can continue my curve now from 10 up through 9 and 8. Uh, and we're almost there now with this. There's just going to be a little bit more here at the front. There's going to be a bit of a slope here somewhere that we need to have a look at and a piece coming along here also. So from 10 across to 2 there would be uh, the edge of the seat so I can see that as far as here. And then under here somewhere, I'm going to have a, another sloping section, uh, which is going to be in line here with this one, projecting this down. The front of the seat is here, so it's going to be from there to this corner here. So it's just a small section of it that's visible here. And also the front edge of the seat. And that completes this question, which was uh, B3 from the 2023 paper.